Okay, what we're going to look at is the one of the basic principles with first aid and where the end results may be. We need to define that any incident may end up with cardiopulmonary arrest. When we talk of, talk of cardiopulmonary arrest, cardio, natural enough, being the heart, pulmonary, the lungs, and arrest means they're stopped. Now, whether or not this is reversible depends on what the situation's about. If we have a situation where the brain fails either through trauma, drugs or stroke. For example, trauma. Currently, Michael Schumacher's in a bad situation because of the head injuries he received with a skiing accident, even though wearing a helmet. If that trauma is sufficient, which causes the brain to fail, we can then wind up with the central nervous system and the brain, for want of a better term, simple terms, is that it causes damage to the brain, brain swells, causes problems with, um, with the respiratory system, heart rate, all those sorts of things, and the person may, may pass away and die. Drugs can cause the brain to fail, particularly if the, if the brain goes into a situation of, um, for example, heroin, where the central nervous system is depressed, um, and it may cause problems with the respiratory and heart rate of the problem. Strokes. We have two different types of strokes. They can either be, a, for in simple terms, either a bleed or a blockage. And depending on how severe the stroke is, as to how much damage is done to the brain, how much damage is done to the brain then can lead to cardiopulmonary arrest. If our airway fails, either through trauma, for example, severe injury to the throat, um, then no air goes in, simple terms, no air goes in, then you have no oxygen, no oxygen then leads to cardio cardiopulmonary arrest. The same situation with an obstruction. If somebody's choking on something, if no air goes in because they're choking, they end up with no air going in, heart, lungs, fail, stops. Is that reversible? Well, obviously, if you can remove the obstruction, then you can allow the oxygen back into the system again, allow the person to breathe, therefore reversing this concept of cardiopulmonary arrest. If your breathing fails, once again, any of these can lead to cardiopulmonary arrest, which then impacts on the other areas around here. Irrespirable atmospheres, for example, somebody has smoke inhalation, uh, or drowning. Um, you can't breathe underwater unless you're Aquaman. So if you have no air going in, breathing fails, no air goes in, causing circulation to fail, brain fail, airway failure, heart stop. Trauma, severe chest injury. Lung disease. And the most prevalent lung disease nowadays is, of course, asthma, because everybody knows somebody at least who has asthma in some shape, form, or description. Uh, and Asthma can be severe enough to cause respiratory failure and people to die. Recognition of any of these things is vitally important from a first aid point of view to realise that there are impacts right the way through which may cause cardiopulmonary arrest. If your heart stops, you've got no circulation going through, no circulation going through can be, be basically means no oxygen going through the system, therefore you die. If your heart stops either through an electric shock or through a rhythm problem, in other words, sudden cardiac arrest, your heart's not pumping, therefore you know, get no circulation, no circulation, no oxygen passing around the system, you die. Cardiac failure, once again, if your heart stops, can lead to any of these. Severe infection is from a first aider's point of view is not a major problem, but blood loss certainly is. External hemorrhaging. How do we tell if somebody has severe external hemorrhaging? Obviously, then we have red stuff leaking all over the place. Basic principles with hemorrhage control is stop it leaking out. If it's a severe leak, you need to stop it fast. The problem comes from a first aider's point of view of recognising internal blood loss. So we need to look at the principles with internal blood loss which cause, which can cause hypovolemic shock, in other words hypovolemic shock, 
not enough red stuff going through your system, not enough red stuff going through your system, you die. Internal blood loss can be recognised by the signs and symptoms the same as any other shock, which is... Um, so, signs of shock, including pale, cold, clammy skin, weak, rapid pulse, rapid, shallow breathing, change in the person's level of consciousness, and particularly where we have internal blood loss, there will be indications of thirst. First aider needs to recognise that once a person goes into shock, particularly hypovolemic shock, then there may be no recovery. Once again, it gets back to circulation failing, everything else fails around the system. If you can reduce the impact of that shock, then you may have the potential, you have the potential to reverse this process. One thing to seriously consider where we talk about internal blood loss and any of these that go around here, we need to look at the mechanism of injury. In other words, what happened in the first place to cause what happened because the more serious the impact, the more serious the, the blood loss, for example, the more chance it is of going into cardiopulmonary arrest. If we go back to brain trauma, the more serious impact on the brain, the more possibility a potential there is for cardiopulmonary arrest. With obstructions, the more severe the obstruction, and if you can't clear the airway, it becomes totally occluded, then there will be no air going. No air goes in, the person dies. When we talk about these other issues, we need to look at there is an impact right the way through here. Is it reversible? Well, it depends on how bad the situation is. If a person has cardiac arrest um, and sudden cardiac arrest where there is a problem with the rhythm of the heart, if you do not have a defibrillator available, then the chances are slim that the person will actually recover from it. We need to ensure that if there is an electric shock, safety of the bystanders to start off with, making sure you don't get zapped yourself, but an electric shock has the real impact of stopping the heart. Stopping the heart causes circulation failure, which then causes breathing failure, which then causes the end result here. First aiders need to recognise that cardiopulmonary arrest can be reversed under certain circumstances, but it depends on how bad the situation is. If somebody gets both their legs bitten off by a shark, your chances of stopping the external blood loss will be extremely slim. Stop.